evangelism. Don't tell me you guys are going to start knocking on doors. Find out on this week Talk Notes that gymnastics preach their faith. Welcome to Talk Gnosis for February 5th, 2014. I'm Bishop Kenneth Canterbury, and as usual, I'm being joined by my lovely co-host, Bishop Laney Peterson. Hello, Laney. How are you this evening? I am wonderful. A little cold, a bit snowy out here, but <laughs> doing real good. How are you, Bishop Ken? Well, I'm just the opposite. It is sunny and a little warm here. I'm in <laughs> South Florida right now. Usually I'm in Northern Florida, but I've uh, taken on a project down in South Florida, and it's... Uh, considerably warmer and more sticky than I've been used to up in northern Florida. I am going to embarrass you a little bit before we get into our topic. Happy birthday for our viewers well, who don't, don't know. Today is Lainey's birthday. And, um, you know, and I just want to know what your secret is because I've known you for, oh God, 15 years probably plus. And um, you're the only person I know who continues to look better and younger every year. You know, well, most of us maybe, age. You know, I've got gray hair here, gray up here. No, no, you don't age at all. So <laughs> maybe I have accomplished the great work and don't know it. <laughs> I, uh, I have no idea. Well, in any case, happy birthday to you, young lady. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we got a pretty interesting topic tonight. You want to introduce it to our viewers, and then we can jump kind of right into it. Absolutely. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about evangelism, which is kind of a, a dirty word in a lot of our circles, actually in a lot of circles in general, because when we think about evangelism, we think about people standing on street corners or knocking on doors and handing out pamphlets and telling people uh, mm -hmm. that they're going to hell unless they take certain steps. And you know, this is obviously something that I think that I, I don't believe that people are going to hell by virtue of the fact that they don't agree with my particular religious doctrine. But is there something that, that modern Gnostics can do to reclaim the Great Commission of going out and, and preaching to all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? What can we do to reclaim evangelism in a positive way? And I mean, is that possible? And if so, and why should we? Should we, should we be doing evangelism at all? So let's, let's, let's talk about that. What do you think, Bishop Ken? Well, you know, when when you first suggested this topic, um, I almost made the same mistake I did when I went to go introduce the show and had to redo it, which is I'm thinking, oh, God, uh, we're going to be talking about evangelicals. Um, but, you know, then it's like, okay, I, I reread the topic, and, and I get the point that's kind of made in Matthew, you know, 28, you know, therefore go and make dis uh, disciples of all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as a Christian Gnostic, you know, I believe in those principles. Um, and the truth is, I mean, even the show, yeah, I mean, if we were going to define what it is, well, you know, we're relaying information, which is exactly what, what one does. Um, you know, the truth is, is that I think that any Gnostic... Any group, I mean, whether one labels oneself as a Gnostic, as an esoteric Christian, whether one is uh, labels himself as a pagan, as a ceremonial magician, whatever one labels oneself, I think that to a certain degree, one is always going to discuss one's quote-unquote faith with others, share that experience with others, because obviously it means a great deal to you because you're a a follower of, of that particular, quote unquote, let's call it faith. And I think especially people like ourselves who are our bishops in our traditions, you know, um, I think that most of us at any opportunity have no problem discussing that with others. Um, I think the biggest difference between maybe us and maybe some of the kind of right wing Christian groups that most people kind of, um, um, kind of associate with this is that um, I don't think that for the most part we're trying to push it down other people's throats and say, hey, if you don't believe the way that I believe you're going to be damned and go to hell. Yeah. 
you know, I got to thinking about this a little bit before the show, and I was thinking, you know, well, why don't I support standing on street corners and knocking on doors? And I started thinking, well, standing on street corners or broadcasting, you know, pleas for people to get saved on television or whatnot, it's almost kind of a public safety approach. If you know that an earthquake or some disaster is imminent, yeah, you want to be pretty much in people's faces about this. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think uh, in, in my own spirituality as well as yours, Bishop Ken, uh, we're less concerned with people, uh, the catastrophic consequences of unbelief in individuals as we are what can ha what happens to the world that we're living in and the society that we're living in when people are essentially functioning on a level of sleep, not being aware of how they're being acted on by forces that don't have their best interests at heart. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking at this from, a, from the perspective of how can I best reach people in such a way that they're going to be willing to listen to me. Because most people are not concerned about dying and going to hell the next day. Right. Uh, you know, we, we have, you know, and any warning to the contrary usually inspire mirth. Um, but I think that there are serious consequences when people don't bother to question uh, why they believe or don't believe uh, in what, whatever they, it is they do about the divine, but also how they act ethically within the world and maybe not recognizing that there's something, there's something that's acting upon them. Mm -hmm. that isn't in their best interest and isn't in the best interest of society. So how do I get them to listen? And, and, and there, there's a sticking point as far as I'm concerned, because obviously the aggressive approach doesn't work, but saying, well, it's, that my religion is just a private matter, so I'm going to keep it to myself unless I've been asked, may not be the best approach either, given that I do think that there is a present danger. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think there's many different approaches to this. I mean, obviously, I think... Uh, in today's world, I mean, obviously, we're on social media. You know, we are on Facebook. We're on YouTube. This show right now is being broadcast on YouTube. You know, so so there are many, um, I think, avenues for, for modern Gnostics that they can take, whether it is setting up blogs, whether it is setting up um, Facebook pages. I know my own particular church, the Oriental Apostolic uh, Church of Namkar, we've got a Facebook page, as do our friends in the uh, Apostolic Joni Church. Uh, most of the Gnostic churches that I'm aware of have groups, and they've got Facebook pages. Um, many of the groups are very, very, very um, uh, close on what they will allow on their page. Other words, it starts becoming spamming. So, you know, like for an example, I don't go on our dear sister Rosamanda's uh, group and I don't spam it with anything from my church. I don't even spam it with promotions from our show because that's not what our group is about. Right. Um, you know, so sometimes there is that fine line on where do we walk, how much do we do, how much information do we just kind of blurt out to people? You know, um, I think, you know, any of us who's ever spent any amount of time on a college campus, I mean, whether it was uh, in our youth or like in uh, my case, you know, uh, recently with my uh, daughter when she was going to UCF, and uh, you've got these college campus preachers uh, handing out tracts, basically standing on boxes, preaching to these young college kids that they're all going to hell. And most of the kids are just getting a laugh out of it. Not usually very effective. <laughs> so, you know, you brought uh, some up some good points. You know, what can we do to be more effective when we want to uh, talk to others and kind of discuss our particular points of view? You know, it's interesting. I, I um, back in my seminary days, one of the things that was reinforced to us when it came to church building and, and evangelism was that churches can do advertise, they can have commercials, they can take up billboards and whatnot. But the most effective way to grow a church is for people in the church to invite others to come with them to church. It's mm -hmm. that personal one-on-one -on -one thing here, and I think. We have perhaps a unique opportunity in our Gnostic tradition where there is a genuine development of the heart, not merely apologetics, the kind of apologetics that some street preachers will use, um, or even some people who use social media or whatnot, but there is a, a heart level 
approach to this where if we can build up our heart and build up our, our love and our ability to have love, we might have the wisdom mm -hmm. to know how to, how, to, how to approach and bring forth this love to others, which in and of itself may be able to attract people. And I'm thinking about some of our, our people who write blogs. Uh, I know our dear sister, Ta Rosman, she writes some remarkable insights Yes. on social media, her, some of her own revelations and, and insights and thoughts, and uh, they're profound, and they're, they, they're very, very touching, and I, I can see where that would certainly attract people. Mm -hmm. But there's also the development of presence, and we, we talked about spiritual practice in the past, but when you, mm -hmm. when you practice, have a spiritual discipline and practice, that can develop your own presence, and that that in and of itself can be a great comfort to people touching their heart and again maybe causing um, them to be responsive to the call of, of, of Sophia mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that call uh, to look beyond uh, what you see and maybe come into touch with come in touch with with wisdom mm -hmm. and which can connect you to the divine that's a real possibility, and I think and I think we see it in a lot of our dear brothers and sisters in this movement. We, you and I were just talking about that earlier. Um, the ability of many of our people to really learn how to develop relationships and connect, and then something grows out of that, mm -hmm. which can be quite, quite remarkable. Well, you know, um, we've talked about this in other shows, and especially, um, I think, even in our past show, and kind of talking about, uh, you know, the, kind of our smaller movements and how it really does give a very personal um, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, relationship. I mean, with, um, you know, upfront narcissism, if you will. Um, and I think some of that can be kind of lost in kind of social media. Um, going back to a concept that we were talking about, you know, for me, um, you know, I kind of have a hard time walking this line of, Okay, am I spamming? Am I uh, simply promoting my particular viewpoints? You know, because when we're talking something as broad spectrum as the term Gnostic, you know, my particular, I guess, coloration of Gnosticism is very much flavored um, in the French Gnostic tradition because that's what I've been part of my whole entire existence. Uh, started off in the French Gnostic tradition and and most of my interpretations of Gnosticism is within the French Gnostic tradition. I mean, everything I belong to is part of that French Gnostic tradition, whether it is Martinism, whether it is Elo Cohen, where it, whether it is, uh, you know, the Gnostic Church in itself, it's all part of that. But there are many expressions. And uh, I belong to many groups, and some of these groups I find that they go into other groups and they kind of start promoting their particular cause. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, whether it is more Sophian based, whether it is, uh, you know, more masculine based, whether it is whatever it is, but they go in and they, they start promoting their own groups. I try to only do that myself up on my church page and my own personal page. Um, I think if you kind of follow me around Facebook, you'll see that I've got two different Facebook accounts, one for my personal self, which is mostly pictures of my daughter, my cats, <laughs> and my dogs, and I've got my uh, my spiritual one, my, um, it used to be my Tao Kifis account, but when I uh, uh, became a primate, I took the name of Tao Jean uh, V, so up on my Tao Jean uh, V account, you'll see just all spiritual things. Um, but on those, I pretty much upfront talk about the uh, things within my tradition. But you don't see me going around really kind of promoting necessarily my particular opinions or my particular faith upon other people because I've never really have taken uh, kind of the ideas of Gnosticism of me telling you what you should believe. I can tell you what's worked for me. I can tell you what's been effective for me in my particular traditions, but I'm also not a big one of ever um, doing more than maybe trying to spark a little bit of interest that then can enter into a dialogue. For me, it's always about that one-on-one -on -one dialogue and not about come to my page and get my wisdom because they're just empty pages on a, words on a page. 
Yeah. You know, I do think that there's a difference between evangelism and proselytizing. And I mm -hmm. think what you're talking about is the latter with proselytizing, and particularly that happens within different groups within a particular tradition. And you see that in some, some Christian churches as well. Um, and I think one thing that's important to keep in mind is when we're proselytizing, I, I see that as something where you're trying to win people for your group or your organization, mm -hmm. whereas in evangelism, there is a proclaiming of good news for that individual. Yes. There's a very different mechanism there. One, you're trying to draw people in. The other, you're trying to proclaim so that something higher than yourself can draw that person in. Well, I think this has been a really interesting topic, and uh, um, I guess um, can we say that Gnostics can reclaim this? I think we can. I think we can. We need to talk <laughs> about that, though. Absolutely. Any exciting news coming up? We do have some a bit a bit of news. Um, and basically, in the Chicago area, two events where I will be, and uh, the first is. Uh, the parish of St. John the Revelator uh, with the Jonahite Church will host its monthly NOSH at the Common Cup in Chicago on February 8th at 11 a.m. Uh, I will be in attendance. There are going to be a bunch of great people there, folks. We've got a wonderful, the, the, the Jonahites have a wonderful community under the direction of the Rector Deacon John DeGilio. If you are looking for a truly loving and wonderful Gnostic community, come out and, and join the group sometime. If you want more information or to RSVP, uh, visit the meetup group at meetup.com slash mission brfp slash um, you know come on out and, and, and join us it's wonderful um, yes. also the, on Sunday the day after um, there is a geomancy study group that is geomancy in the form of divination not feng shui um, that meets at the occult bookstore in Chicago and at 3 p.m. Uh, we're going to be having our second uh, our second meeting uh, to study geomancy I will be giving a talk on developing questions Questions for geomantic divination, and oh. you can find the uh, occult bookstore at 1164 North Milwaukee Avenue, Chicago, Illinois 60642, and you can find uh, the occult bookstore at at facebook.com/slash occult bookstore, all one word, uh, to check out and get more information. Thank you. Awesome. You know, I got to say, the occult books are uh, it's one of the things I miss the most about living in Chicago. It was always one of the, you know, greatest resources uh, that all of us on this path kind of had. And it's great to know that they're continuing their tradition of giving classes and stuff like this is awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, as usual, you know, I'm going to tell all of our uh, listeners, we do appreciate your feedback. We've been having some pretty interesting discussions on, on YouTube lately. So make sure that you leave your comments. You know, uh, we really appreciate that. Any ideas that any of our viewers have for topics, we definitely take those into consideration. Um, it may be something that either ourselves or our producer, we don't come up with. So, you know, um, we would love to see you can get a hold of us on TalkGnosis at GnosticNYC.com. Leave comments on YouTube. Look us up on Facebook. Uh, and we appreciate it. Okay. What's going to be coming up on our next show? Well, we're going to kind of carry this, and we're going to talk about tools for sharing Gnosticism. You brought that, you touched on it, and we're just going to talk a little bit about what sort of things we have on the material plane for helping to transmit, um, hopefully, um, some Gnosis to others. So I think it's going to be a very interesting show. We hope to have a guest. We'll see what happens. Fantastic. And um, as always, folks, this has been a production of the Gnostic NYC Network. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends, click the like button, and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or any other organization. No animals were harmed during the production of this show. And for more talk gnosis, tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night.